I'm going to try and bring Sambo in again. Sambo, how are you doing? Hey, Shane. How's it going? Good. You you must have changed phone or device or something like that. You're clear as a bell now. Yeah, I, did, uh, I wasn't getting it through in the tablet, so my uh, technology and it's not just <laughs> great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hear can I, can I ask you about a massively dramatic weekend in the Antrim Hurling Championship? It was semi-final weekend for anyone um, who doesn't know that. So Donovan Rasa beat uh, your own cushion doll 418 to 320. And Don Lloyd, they saw off St. John's 119 to 13 points. That'll be, they'll be looking for a three in a row. But can you explain some of the drama in the Rasa win? Because it's the first county title that our decided are going to get to since winning in 2004. And it was a late goal from substitute Dara Rocks. Like it was complete drama. Yeah, it was. It was. Uh, it was crazy. We thought we had it won. We were seven points down, and came back. Uh, we got in a uh, portion of goal. Then bring us into the game. Then we thought we had won. The, we had a puck out. Uh, we pocked it out, maybe wrongly to the extra man. He launched it in. Michael Armstrong caught it, laid it off, and ball in the back of the net, and came over like. But. Uh, arguably probably the two best teams in Antrim are in the final now. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, the thing we talked about um, a couple of years ago, I did a piece with you and you were talking about hurling in Belfast and, you know, trying to make strides there. So we have a Belfast team getting through and then St. John's, a West Belfast team, they're probably somewhat aggrieved with a disallowed goal and they could have had it back to a point with 12 minutes to go there. Is there improvements coming in Belfast hurling? Oh, there is without a doubt. Uh, to that, uh, but uh, there's always been good hurlers in Belfast and that there. It's just getting that whole team environment going. But no, there is a an urgency with St John's and Russell in particular and that there. Like, uh, but uh, no, they're still on my shout. But I kind of said at the start of the year that one all the huffing and puffing's over. Whoever's going to win this is going to have to beat the law, and I still believe that's the case. Mm, but yeah, well, capable of that now. I'm just going through the. I was looking at the match report, and it was um, like last year, Rossa lost to Dunlile, and you're talking about, but it's back to back wins over Cushadaw. But the way this game uh, panned out, Rossa were down by three points deep into injury time. Paddy McGill, he'd scored a goal after a bit of a mix up. Then Rossa somehow, I think it was Jared Walsh, his free went over to bring it back to two. Then Walsh moved up from midfield to full back after the breaks and did a high ball, plucked out the air from Michael Armstrong. He'd had, I think, a pretty quiet first half where Neil McManus had given him trouble. Was he full back on Neil McManus and he'd had a rough time and he moved up to full forward and he ended up scoring two goals? Yeah, well, Michael Armstrong's probably, in my opinion, one of the best Antrim hurlers this past number of years and that there. Like when we were last there with the county and that there, we made great strides in trying to get him on. He on it. Then he got a bad injury and he plays football and he suffers a bit from injury and that there. But He's a real ball winner and he's one of my favourite hurlers in Antrim. But he was getting a rough time. McManus was uh, fighting space at times and that there. And McManus was playing championship hurling. They moved him up and he was allowed to catch a ball in the edge of the square. And rather than trying a ball in the china shop thing, he was good enough and smart enough to lay it off. And then it was an easy tap in for there. But no, Michael Armstrong's... Uh, uh, Serious bit of stuff now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And do, do you see, like, what, what was the, what, like, do you think um, Cushion Doll misfired in any way? Or was it just just the way it panned out? Oh, look, like, we probably won. We made a lot of mistakes. I think, I think, both management, I think uh, Ross uh, came out at the very start and their plan was pretty obvious. They were going to target our full back line. And the, and the, the Ross uh, management, it worked for them, like, and they were good enough to know that. And they went at us, and it, the four goals, like, we wouldn't have been happy with any of the four goals, really, and that there from a club point of view in the end. But it is what it is. But uh, no, like, Russell were well deserved their one, but the mistakes were made at the very dang, like, like, probably our goalkeeper should have not pocked the ball out to Jared Walsh. Stanton free would have been the first thing, and he he went back as kind of a sweeper. And then he just launched it into the square and like a, a hit and hope sort of ball that you do all the time and out there. And, but Michael Armstrong was allowed to catch it and it shouldn't be. should at least have broke the ball if nothing else. But, you know, like, I don't think uh, both managers would have been happy with their their defences over there. But 
Ross has got room to improve, and they will. They'll give to Loy all they want. Like uh, they've got nice hurl. Petey's a real threat. Armstrong, wherever he goes, is a threat. You know, they've young Murphy there is deadly on the freeze and coming out there, and they've uh, Shannon and people like that. No, Ross is a team in the up, and they're hungry for it. Like if there's any team that should be hungry, it should be Ross. Like, yeah, and Don Loy haven't won the last couple. Do you sense that the hunger is in them to win three in a row in four or five years? That was a strange game, seeing you know, like St John's went into that game probably underdogs as they should, but and then getting a man sent off in the first two three minutes was it just it's kind of like the the crowd just uh, here we go, you know that's going. But the line never really pushed on them. Like St John's went, I think twenty three minutes or something without scoring from play. And Deloy only were three points ahead at that time, and they weren't really going at him other than killing Malloy. He was, he was doing what Killing does, taking the game to him and that there. But Deloy wasn't really firing and all cylinders either. But and then after the water break, they got the goal and things like that. But I'd have to say the conditions in the Deloy game was horrendous for any sort of hurling. Like you know, we've all played in them sort of days and balls skipping about and the rain thundering down. It was horrible conditions for any sort of hurling. But St John's deserve great credit because they're in the game more or less right on to the end, like uh, even with 14 men. Mm, yeah. I was reading the match report by Kenny Archer and he was talking about St John's were ha unhappy beforehand about the appointment of referee Kevin Park and more unhappy afterwards because of the, the goal for Big Donald Nugent being rolled out, or sorry, ruled out because they, they would have only trailed by a point with 12 minutes to go. And he says, uh, Brian McFall said afterwards, he didn't have an issue with the red card that happened early on, but uh, he did say, I don't want to say too much. I don't want to get myself in bother, but some of the decisions I just couldn't fathom with that referee. I just cannot explain the turn of that game. We got a goal and he didn't give it. I can't understand it. I'd love to know why. That was a crucial part of the game. We were coming back into it. Was it is, is he justified in saying that? Uh, well, I suppose, to be honest, not there. I'm probably not going to, I'm going to get myself in the ball out here, but... Yeah, the big talking points in both games was the, the, the referee. And now, the red card thing, I wasn't that close to it, but it is what it is. When you poke somebody now and that there, it was probably not meant. It was probably, you know, maybe 10 years ago, you got away with like that, you know, a poke at that start of the game and you'd have got to tell them off. But it is what it is. And I, I spoke to people that would be said, and they said the ref had no choice. To be fair, the ref, he consulted his linesman made a decision, but the penalty thing that Deloy ended up getting a free out for it, I'm not sure what the free was for. Like, I couldn't understand why Donald Nugent would foul in that situation when he was going through. He was the one that was causing the problems. He wasn't going to give away a free at that stage. And and that there, the, probably there was a few calls in both games that were iffy and that there, but at the end of the day, Deloy were always going to win, and Ross have thoroughly deserved their victory too, so from a cushion all point of view, we couldn't say that the referee lost us a game or or St. John's will not be able to say that either. Like, it, it was what it was, but there was a few decisions in the other games where you're always going to question. Like, Okay, and then just even sort of an early preview of the final, what way do you see that going? Just don't lie the fact that they've been there and done it against the Rasta team, that obviously it's 0-4. Yeah, well, it's... Past number of years, I've always been impressed with the life forward line, and I always thought their Kelly's heel you could have got their backs, but their backs were very good yesterday. Seeing that they were an extra man up, but they allowed uh, Connor McKinley, St. John's allowed uh, Connor McKinley to go free a lot of time, and he's the one boy you don't want. He's very athletic and comes out with a ball, and he uses it really well. And that there, but uh, the Lloyd's backs were good. Seeing that they were they had an extra man for the whole game. But, no, I think Ross is going to give it everything here. They've nothing to lose. They will be underdogs. I would say everybody will make Deloy favourites, and rightly so. Deloy have got the respect. They're going for three in a row. But it could be a good county final. We haven't kind of, I don't think we've talked since the end of the, of the inter-county season, Sambo. Like, how do you reflect on Antrim's year there? Because it looked very good in the league, and then the championship, it was a heavy defeat to Dublin, and then... Very disappointing to go down to the Joe McDonough after losing to Leash. I was at that game in Parnell Park. So, how would you reflect on the year? Well, to be honest, Shane, I ended up disappointed. We got off to a great start and 
we showed great heart in the thing and I was really pleased with the way things were going. But against Dublin and Leeds and that there, we didn't play with the same intensity, the same, we didn't bring, we brought Championship Hurling to the league and we didn't bring it to the Championship. I don't know if, if that's a fair remark, but I, I felt we didn't have the same energy or the same desire as, as we had in the league. Like against Wexford and against Clare, we showed great fight, great spirit. But that seemed to be gone against Leash and gone against Dublin. Like we ended very disappointed. Though we stayed up in the league, which which was probably the most important thing at this start of the year. We got another go at with the big boys, but it was very disappointment going back to the Joe McDonough. And we're going to find it very hard next year. On the you know the league's going to be very hard. We're not coming in under the radar. And there's real good teams and Offleys on the up and you know Westmeat or uh, Carlo and things like that. There's there's Legantum's going to have find it hard in the coming year. Yeah, yeah. Are there players coming through? Is there anyone that Darren Gleeson will be looking to draft in that you've noticed? Well, you know, like uh, I actually seen Darren at the matches yesterday. Not there. Like I don't know. Like the one guy. I, I'd be going for and I mentioned really Michael Armstrong and he's not a young guy he's been around a long time but he plays the football as well but I, I don't know yeah of course there is there's, there's here and there but are they ready to step up like our own in our own club with a young guy Scott Walsh here who was probably our best man yesterday is he ready for inter county scene but maybe not full on but he's, he should definitely be making that step up there's a few yeah but I don't know uh, it's hard to say at the minute, like the Deloy uh, St. John's game wasn't a great game of hurling. It wasn't classic. It was kind of, once the sending off and happened, it kind of fettered out. You you always knew the end result, no matter what happened, you know, kind of that way. The scoreline made our game exciting, but again, like there was a lot of mistakes from both teams in that there. And, uh, and, uh, and, and you have to call it how you see it. And I think that's it, but, you know, our under twenties weren't great this year. Our minors, a lot of work to do there. I don't know. There's maybe you know, but watching young fellas at under sixteens and that throughout the county, there is good hurlers there coming through. But we need to start making that gap from under sixteens to minor to twenty one and that there. We don't seem to be doing that. Seeing like we were, our under twenty team this year was very disappointing. Mm, yeah, and and then just a final question before I let you go. Well, what are your thoughts on the the overall pecking order in hurling at the moment? Limerick, you know, again they've won and they've won relatively well, very comprehensively two All Ireland finals in a row by a combined twenty seven points. Do you see anyone being able to challenge them next year? I mean, obviously Colin Bonner's after taking over with Tipperary. Uh, Tomas here, his county Watford. Liam Cahill staying. We don't know what will happen with Galway yet. Although Michal Dunne, who looks like the man who'll be back in, do you think anyone can challenge Limerick next year? And a short answer, Shane, no, I, no, I, no. I, I just think that Limerick team, it's nearly a perfect storm for them, and out there, and like it's, it's a bit like you know we'll all hop off and good leagues and all this here, but I think when it comes down to that, Limerick team are just they're like a perfect storm. Like uh, I don't know, like. Maybe if they get a couple of key injuries and things like that, you don't know down through the years. But sitting here today, Limerick just seemed to be that far ahead of the rest of the pack at the minute. There's Limerick and then there's there's three or four teams maybe chasing them. There's three or four chasing the teams that are chasing them. And I know, I have to be honest, I, I, I before they won all earned, I was managing them and I seen we played Limerick out here in their own pits and they basically came up with a, a reserve team. And you could just see signs of their strength and depth, their 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 physique, their physical, their hurling, everything about them. They they seem to have a good management set up. They seem to be grounded fellas. They're athletic, and they just seem to be love their hurling. You know, I, I don't know. I don't know the ins and outs of every team. Obviously, every other team, like the Tips and the Clares and the Corks and Galway's not there. Like you know, I thought at the start of the year, Galway would be the team that maybe could. Give Limerick a rattle, but Galway kind of faded away too. I don't know if if me and you were sitting in a pub now, I tell you now, Limerick's going to one dollar earn next year. <laughs> and then, um, like you, I'm sure you obviously came up against Colin Bonner a number of times. Would you have known him? Would you know him away from the field, or is it what was he even like on the field? Yeah, well, I obviously played against him my generation, and then I managed against him with Carlo and that there. 
when Antrim and Carlo were really battling it out and we had a couple we we got a couple of great results off Carlo and it came down to the wire and things like that there. But no, like Colin will get in there with a I'm sure he's a he's a obviously a good hurling man, good backroom team. He'll get a best he'll get a lift all, all new managers get that first year, you know, enthusiasm and that there and there's no doubt that Tipperary have the stick men and the quality and that there. But you know, like I don't know. I I hope I hope somebody beats Limerick because we all as neutrals we want to see it going around. I would love to see a Cork Clare somebody, but the, like your neighbour there sit me said you know Waterford everybody would love to see Waterford one and all Ireland. But I my own views at this moment in time, I hope I'm wrong for the good of Hurling, but I just would I just can't see by Limerick. Okay, well, look, brilliant. Uh, thanks very much for joining us, Sam. I really appreciate you doing that and juggling all the different devices to get it working right for us. No problem, Shane. I'll try and get me up to date in this technology before the next time. Oh, you're improving all the time. Thanks very much, Sambo. All the best. If you enjoyed this piece of content, please follow us on YouTube by hitting the subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner of the page, which helps the channel grow. And if you want audio podcasts, go to patreon.com forward slash our game.